Good evening. We'll call this meeting to order. This is the Current Council of Governments Transportation and Planning Policy Committee meeting, Thursday, October 20th, 2022. I'm uh, starting the meeting at 6.30 p.m. And we will begin with our flag salute. If you all please stand. Salute. This conference will now be recorded. It's America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Okay, so for those of you who um, are joining us um, remotely, if you could please uh, keep your um, keep your mics muted for any background noise, unless, of course, you want to talk, and then I will um, obviously recognize you. And so we're going to begin with um, item number one, which is roll call. Mr. Couch? Here. Ms. Helton? Here. Mr. Blades? Present. Oh, he's here. Mr. Crump? Here. Ms. Flores? Here. Mr. Garcia? Here. Mr. Cryer? Here. Mr. Navarro? Here. Mr. Crichton? Here. Ms. Para? Ms. Prout? Yes, here. Mr. Scribner? Here. Uh, Bob Smith? Phil Smith? Phil Smith, here. Ms. Tafoya? Here. Ms. Trujillo? And Ms. Vasquez? Here. Thank you. Item number two on our agenda is public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on the agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Do we have anyone here that would like to make a public comment? Okay, seeing none then, we'll move on to item number three. Um, I guess I should ask if there's anyone online that wanted to make a public comment. Okay, hearing none, then we will now move on to item three. This is special action item, Assembly Bill 361, authorizing teleconferencing under certain conditions. Ms. Napier, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Um, this is our uh, regular item so that we can uh, still conduct virtual meetings while there's still a, what, they're, what the governor is saying is a COVID pandemic. Um, we are asking that you adopt resolution number 2245 and this will e extend our um, ability to have uh, virtual meetings uh, from October 20th, which is tonight to November 19th. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do we have anyone present that would like to make a public comment on this item before we move to a vote? Okay, seeing and hearing none then, um, I'll return to the commission for um, a motion. Kathy Prout makes the motion. Okay, we'll take a first by Ms. Prout and we'll take a second by Mr. Cryer. Um, so roll call vote please. Vasquez. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Prout. Aye. Crichton. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Flores. Yes. Garcia. Aye. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. And Couch. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If a comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda 
and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. And so on the consent agenda, we have items A, B, C, D, and E. Do we have any members of the public that are present or online that would like to ask any questions or, or make any comments about any of the consent agenda items? I don't see any, so I'll return to the council for any questions, comments, or a motion to approve. If none, so move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Couch? Yes. Helton? Yes. Blades? Aye. Crump? Yes. Flores? Yes. Garcia? Aye. Cryer? Yes. Crichton? Yes. Prout? Yes. Scribner? Aye. Phil Smith? Yes. Tafoya? Yes. And Vasquez? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move on to item number five, unmet transit needs in Kern County. Uh, staff to make a report on this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Prior to making any allocation from the Transportation Development Act funds to uses other than public transportation or pedestrian and bikeway facilities, Kern Cog is legally required under California Public Utilities Code Section 99401.5 to determine whether unmet transit needs have been identified within its jurisdiction. Through newspaper advertisements, members of the public were requested to provide their input. Public input was uh, also obtained through public hearings held in the cities, rural counties of current, co rural communities of Kern, Golden Empire Transit District, and the city of Delano. Kern Cog's Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee, SSTAC, reviewed the results of these public hearings. At its August 17, 2022 meeting, the Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed a countywide analysis of unmet transit needs provided by Kern Cog staff, and members of the SSTAC determined that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet within the Kern County. At the September 15, 2022 Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting, the committee held a public hearing, requested unmet transit needs from the public, and after hearing none, closed the hearing. Kern Cox staff reported that it had received an unmet transit needs request for service from the resident in the Gossamer Grove area of Shafter. Kern Cox staff met with Shafter staff to resolve the request for transit. The new service will commence soon. Staff and the members of the SSTAC recommend a finding that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet in Kern County and authorize the chair to sign resolution number 2238. Thank you. Do any members of the public um, have any comments on this item? Okay, hearing none then, we'll close the public comment period and return to the council. Any questions or comments, or otherwise we'll entertain a motion? Uh, a motion. Chairman. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, yes, I think I should make a comment. Um, I know the staff from your office as well as from Shafter Met, and there is some arrangements being made for this need, but my comment is in general because I believe the bus could cross the line for one person, and now it's gonna cost additional money for us to have to pay for transportation to get this person transported into Bakersfield, which is just across the line. In Especially because the bus is not even full, it's not even occupied at times. It just seems that it's not correct and proper that we continue to supply a service especially when it's a special needs and something should be done in the future for any other concerns for people that have just on the line it just doesn't make sense to me if we had a big community that needed to have lots of service it's a completely different setup this one is a one need that's just at the line and the bus isn't allowed to cross thank you 
Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Did the staff have any comment on this? Staff is uh, open to working with Shafter. What they've decided to do is contract the surface out and measure it for its performance and its cost and evaluate the, uh, the effectiveness of the service. And we are open up to any other alternative selection. But what we'd like to do is meet the untran uh, unmet transit need at the present time. And I'll be happy to work with uh, Shafter on any other uh, method we can to deliver the service very good thank you I know I know that there's been discussion and I realize that but I still think that it should be noted not just with our own local but beyond that transit needs to they we're encouraged today to use transit and here we have a single need and yet we've created a problem because we can't cross the line okay thank you any other any other comments or questions okay very well the requested action um, is to for staff and members of the of the TAC to recommend a finding uh, that there are no unmet transit needs uh, do we have a motion to the effect to allow the chair to sign the resolution so move second okay we have a motion to second roll call vote couch Yes. Blades? Aye. Crump? Yes. Flores? Yes. Garcia? Aye. Cryer? Yes. Navarro? Yes. Crichton? Yes. Prout? Yes. Scribner? Aye. Phil Smith? Aye. Tafoya? Yes. And Vasquez? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that takes us to um, item number, let's see, we're on item number seven. This is our Caltrans report, and we'll start with District 6. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, members of the committee. Uh, Michael Navarro with District 6. So a couple of... Um, Grant opportunity, just want to share reminders of. So Clean California, we mentioned, I believe, last month about the cycle two for the local grants program with $100 million will be available. That calls in January with applications due in April. And uh, Caltrans will be hosting a virtual workshop on November 3rd from 1 p.m. to 2.30. And those links to register for that event have been sent out to your communities. Um, another one coming up is our sustainable transportation planning grant for fiscal year 22-23. The draft guide was released on October 3rd for 30-day review. Uh, there's about $34 million in planning grants available this year, which is similar to past years. And there's also a one-time augmentation of $50 million available for climate adaptation planning grants. Uh, so we'll be holding a joint workshop with OPR at the end of this month with a couple additional workshops. And then the district will host a, uh, a hybrid workshop as well. So more information should come on that. We're anticipating probably a call for projects in December of this year. It's a little later than past years, but um, that's what we're being told at this point. And just an early heads up, you know, we just closed the grant cycle or the federal grant cycle for um, the Reconnecting Communities program. The state will be doing a similar program. This will be called Highways to the Boulevards. We're thinking that call is going to be in June. Um, the federal program had $200 million per year over the next five years. The state program is going to have $150 million available this year uh, for just for the state of California. As for projects, the Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project, which is modifying the State Route 58 and 99 interchange. Uh, we anticipate wrapping that project up this winter. Uh, work continues at that location. The project's about 85% complete. The Stay Route 99 Rehab Project from Palm Avenue Overcrossing to Beardsley Canal Bridge. Uh, I'm looking to on punch list items to wrap up. Project completion for that is expected uh, in November of this year. Uh, work continues on the State Route 99 Rehab Project from Old US 99 to White Lane. Um, Activities between Panama Lane and White Lane. The work right now is shifted to the two outside lanes where they're lowering the freeway lanes under the White Lane overcrossings in progress, and the White Lane northbound on ramps are opened. Uh, stage two work between Union Avenue and State Route 119 includes removal of the existing outside lanes with paving in progress, and between State Route 119 and Panama Lane, replacing the two outside lanes. Uh, this project is a little further out for fall of 2023 for completion. Uh, the Union Avenue High Intensity Activated Crosswalks or the Hawk System on State Route 204 and 8th Street. 
Uh, contractor is still waiting on the signal poles and they're expected to arrive at, at the end of this month, so that project's still under temporary suspension. Uh, the Santa Fe Roundabout, uh, which is a chapter of Santa Fe and Los Angeles Avenue intersection. Uh, we're just starting design on that project now. So we wrapped up project approval environmental document phase was achieved on October 7th. And this is a, a little further out as well. So construction for this project won't be till spring of 2025. Uh, State Route 223 and Arvin Derby signal. So the signal had been in, in flashing mode since, uh, but as of October 12th, it's in normal operations. There was a delay on this project, unfortunately, working with PUC and the railroads but now it is in operation. Um, the Taft left turn channelization project 119 in Kern Street, that project uh, was advertised and expect construction to start in fall of this year. The Stay Route 184 Sunset Roundabout, uh, construction start on October 3rd with a full closure of the intersection. There's currently a detour in place. And lastly, the Arvin 223-184 roundabout uh, construction has started. The project is still in stage one, about 75% complete, and expected completion of that project is June of next year. With that, that completes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions for District 6? Okay, not hearing any. Thank you very much. How about District 9? Go to their Caltrans report. District 9. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. This is Kirsten Helton with District 9. Um, I just have a few items in addition to District 6. Um, first, the State Route 58 uh, truck climbing lane TSEP application for the next uh, phases of the project, including plan specification estimates and right away will be submitted to our headquarters next week. We wanted to thank Kern Cog for coordinating letters of support uh, outreach for the truck climbing lane for the TSEP and the rural applications. District 9 planning has staffed a new funding strategy position with the intent of identifying and obtaining additional funding streams. So to that end, our staff met with Kern Cog and Kern County this week to strengthen relationships and develop uh, strategies for funding for regional project advancement. The CTC allocated last week $8 million for infrastructure repair and improvement on Eastern Kern State Route 14 on the Freeman Gulch Cap M project. That goes from 1.1 miles north of Red Rock Canyon Road to five miles south of State Route 178 West. Um, that work will include pavement rehabilitation and some sign upgrades. Um, the tenant schedule is to begin in January of 2023 with completion in April of 2023. For Eastern Kern project updates, we have the Cummins Valley left turn uh, lane pocket project on State Route 202 between Cummins, Cummins Valley Road and Van Ducci Road near Tehachapi. So crews are widening the highway and constructing a left turn lane on the eastern intersection. Work is scheduled there for Monday through Friday from 7 to 5 p.m. And we have one way traffic control and drivers may experience up to 20 minute delays. This week they've been doing earthwork and we've uh, noticed that delays are really no more than 10 minutes. Those, uh, that traffic control is expected to wrap up prior to Thanksgiving. That's all I have for my report, and I would welcome any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions for District 9? Okay, I'm not hearing any. Thank you both, um, both District 6 and District 9 for your reports. Now we'll move on to Item 8, Executive Director's Report. Mr. Hakimi. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have a few items on this agenda. Uh, as Kirsten mentioned, the CTC met on October 12th and 13th. Delano had uh, two ATP allocations. Congratulations. And Kirsten already um, mentioned the allocation for um, work on State Route four, um, 14. The next CTC meeting will be December 7th and 8th in Riverside. I will be attending. If uh, any board members are interested in attending, since it's relatively close, please let me know. Over the past month, um, I've continued to attend meetings about State Route 99 and 58. Hopefully, I'll have some good news uh, next month to talk to you about about the one of the missing movements at 99 and 58. Continue to discuss the work on uh, Union Avenue, state, also known as State Route 204. 
7 Standard Road and 43 Roundabout. Work is continuing. Um, I think I've already reported this, but I'm pleased to report that Caltrans is um, working in some safety improvements on their rehabilitation project on State Route 33 on the west side of the county. Um, I'm also uh, pleased to report that the final all seven, six or seven girders were placed um, successfully on State Route 46 over the last month. And I continue to have conversations and meetings about uh, truck climbing lanes on State Route 58. And uh, I will discuss more about that when I tell you a little bit about my trip to Washington, D.C. In your uh, folder tonight, um, I'd like to report some news that was released um, just this afternoon. Congratulations to Kern County uh, for being recommended to receive $8.8 .8 million in ATP money through uh, the state-funded ATP program. And it looks like uh, Kern Cog will have enough money to fund Tehachapi, Kern County, Wasco, Delano, and Taft's projects subject to your approval, which will likely come in um, two or three, three months. So the ATP list is out, and as a reminder, our policy is to follow the rankings of the ATP list that the state prepares, which is in your folder. And Kern County was the only project that was funded by the state. All the other projects will be up to us to fund with the approximately $16.8 million that we will receive. Subject to any of your questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Hakimi. Do we have any questions for our director? Okay, hearing none, do we, we'll move on then to this, item. This is Phil. Okay, Hi, Phil. Hello, Phil. Phil. Uh, just uh, many thanks for all the ongoing efforts for the truck climbing lanes. And uh, if Aaron, if you could shoot me a, a phone number for the contact that you had a discussion with in Washington, that I could maybe, uh, having not very much luck trying to call in person. So maybe a phone number I could just talk to someone. Thank you. Will do. Thank you. Now we'll move on to item nine, member statements. Do we have any statements by any members of the council? Okay, I'm hearing none then. We will adjourn the meeting and we will now open the meeting for current council of governments and roll call remains the same. And so we will move to the first item um, after roll call will be item two. This is public comments. Uh, this portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the council. Council members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask questions for clarification, make referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the council at a later meeting. So we'll ask now if there's any members of the public that are present that would like to make any comments uh, to the council. I don't see any in person. I don't hear any online then. We'll now move on to the consent agenda items. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by current colleague staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. And so our consent agenda items are items A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And so I'll ask if there's any members of the public that have any questions or comments on those items. I'm not hearing any, so I'll return to the council for any questions, comments, or a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll move approval, this is Couch. Okay, we have a first by Cryer, a second by Couch. Roll call vote. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Vasquez? Yes. Tafoya? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. Zach Scribner? Aye. Prout? Aye. Crichton? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Garcia? Aye. Crump? Yes. Blades? 
Aye. And Couch. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so items four, five, and six have nothing on those, and so we'll move on to item seven, which is our executive director's report. Mr. Akimi. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman. I have just a couple items. Uh, I'd like to formally introduce uh, our two newest employees. They are both regional planners. Uh, for those of you in the room, I'm not sure if they can be seen online or not. Irene Enriquez joined us from the county of Kern. She's a regional planner. If you could wave. <laughs> and Carl Davison uh, joined us from the city of Bakersfield. He's also a regional planner. Well, please uh, welcome our newest employees. And uh, as I said a few minutes ago, um, I was going to give you a little bit more information about the truck climbing lanes. As you know, I went with um, the other seven COGS in the uh, San Joaquin Valley to Washington, D.C. Uh, just a little bit after our board meeting in September and spent about four days in Washington. Uh, the most productive part of my meeting that I will share with you is uh, my meetings with the o Office of the Secretary of Transportation, the Department of Transportation. I made several contacts there that I followed up with um, several times over the last month, specifically about our application, uh, our rural application that has been submitted jointly with Caltrans District 9 and Caltrans headquarters for truck climbing lanes uh, on Route 58 between Bakersfield and Tehachapi. Um, in the past month, uh, with assistance from our staff, Linda Urata and others, we've obtained letters of support from both of our U.S. Senators, Senator Feinstein and Senator uh, Padilla. Thank you to both of them and their s staffs. And I've had conversations as recently as today. And uh, Mayor, Mayor Smith, I will um, give you as many phone numbers as I can give you to their headquarters. And please call and uh, call and call again. Uh, the decisions <coughs> are likely to be made within the next two months. And that's uh, at that information came today. And again, we are asking for $44 million to add uh, one truck climbing lane about three and a half miles long between uh, Bakersfield and Tehachapi. This is the steepest location. It's known uh, in the application as location number two. Uh, and I am very hopeful, and as a reminder, there was only two applications for the entire state of California in this category. So. I'm liking our chances. Uh, subject to, uh, to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Akimi. Appreciate, right. appreciate it. Do we have any yeah, comments from so council again. members? Uh, and thank you again, and I will call anybody and everybody that I can. Mm -hmm. uh, I encourage anyone else to help us out here oh. as well. Uh, thank I, you. I do have one more thing, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chairman. Of course. Uh, and uh, you know this, but I'm not sure if the rest of the council does. Uh, I've been invited to meet with uh, former mayor of uh, Los Angeles, Antonio Villa Ragosa, next uh, Wednesday. He is the new infrastructure advisor to, uh, to Gavin Newsom. And my plans right now are to share with him our application for the truck climbing lanes, urge him to uh, advocate to directly to the Secretary of Transportation and to put our application on the top of the pile. And I will report next month on uh, my progress with, uh, with the former mayor of Los Angeles. Thank you. So not hearing any other questions or comments, then we will move on to member statements. Do we have any statements from council members? Not hearing anyone, and so we don't have any closed sessions, uh, session items, so that brings us to the conclusion of our agenda for this evening. Our next scheduled meeting will be November 17th, and we are adjourned. <laughs>